Just think what would happen if we all had the spirit without limit. What would that look like? Well, we see an example in Ephesus in chapter 19 of what happens to a city, a rather large city. What happens to a city when the people receive the Holy Spirit without limit? Crazy, cool things happen. So my question today is this. Why are we so afraid to do that? Somewhere along the line, somewhere throughout the 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years of the church, the Holy Spirit in many cultures has become less important. Maybe it was because we weren't seeing the miracles like the early church was. Maybe it was because some theology threw us off. Maybe it was because we were depending on this more than this. But somewhere along the way, the Holy Spirit became less important in general to the American church. We have become the tail, not the head. We follow culture. We're not making culture. Maybe we think if we do what those holy rollers are doing will become crazy like them. If I could tell you anything about following Jesus, don't worry what God leads you to do. Don't worry what the Holy Spirit what, what might happen if you allow the Holy Spirit to fill your life with his presence? Don't worry about it. Like Charles Stanley said, depend on the Holy Spirit. Leave the consequences to God. If we allow the Holy Spirit to really fill our lives, you are going to get into your lane. What do I mean by that? I mean that your calling that God has for you will fulfill its purpose. And your calling, you fulfilling your calling is important to me. Because it will help me to fulfill my calling in Christ Jesus. Nobody is less important. The only people that are less important are, are those that are not filled with the Holy Spirit. So what are we to do about that? Well... First, we have to understand that the Holy Spirit wants all of you. Okay? He doesn't want just part of you. He doesn't want to just circumcise your heart. He wants to fill you with his presence. He wants every part of you. But pastor, I can't have any more fun if... I get filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, no, you're going to have a lot of fun. Pa 
Pastor, well, you know, I was filled with the Holy Spirit back in 1970. Are you filled today? I think that's a legitimate question. Are you filled today with the Holy Spirit? Or has life filled you? Has our society filled you? Has fear filled you? Has money filled you? What's filling you right now? Is it the Holy Spirit or is it something else? We need people that are filled with God's Spirit because they're going to do crazy, cool, unusual miracles. They're going to be imitators of Christ. They're going to be able to walk this walk. They're not going to believe every wind of doctrine. They're going to be teachable, understandable. They're going to want to grow. They're going to do the right thing. I was impressed by a couple people this past week. As I was, as we were discussing an issue, they responded the right way. That only comes through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to make everybody in this room, every believer, every child of God, the Holy Spirit wants to make you a witness, a walking witness. Yeah, last night we went out. Yes, last week I went out a couple times. I I walked 18,000 steps. (laughs) But last night, yesterday, our experiences weren't from going out. Our experiences were happening by what we were seeing. I know as Eleanor and Lynette went to the laundry mat, they prayed for somebody. They had time to witness. They saw the Holy Spirit minister to people. And they broke down. They were crying. They were, they, they were crying out to God. Holly saw a whole bunch of opportunities at Walmart. How we could just go there, hang out, and just follow this very simple thing. When you go to Walmart, you're not going there to buy milk. You're going there to be a witness. And by the way, you might pick up some milk while you're there. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to turn us into an army, not an immature army, not a bunch of irregulars. Is that what they call them, Wally? Irregulars, if they're not. (laughs) They They would call up the troops in the Civil War, and they had regulars and they had irregulars. Irregulars were ill equipped to fight, okay? In fact, That's probably why they lost Gettysburg, the South, because the irregulars were the cavalry available. But God wants to raise up regulars. (laughs) Regulars, people that are filled with his spirit, people that will do peculiar things. Amen? But you got to desire the Holy Spirit once again. You got to allow God to work in your life again. You can't stay in the same old, same old. I made these cards. And why I made them for unbelievers, they probably apply to us. What do you believe? Are you tired of the same old, same old? Is something just missing from your life? Are you contemplating eternity? Who are you trusting? What do you believe? Is God speaking to you? 
Maybe it's time to really give Jesus a try. I think we have to understand this, is that there was something missing with the believers before Jesus went back to heaven. There was something that was missing. Even though they were believers, even though they were following Jesus, there was something missing. And we see this in the apostle Peter. Peter would deny the Lord Jesus three times. And he said, no, Jesus, I'll never deny you. No, not me. You know, I'm your, I'm your guy. I'm right with you. It's me and Jesus and then those sons of thunder. But Peter would go on to deny Jesus three times. But then 50 days later, he would be standing up and preaching Jesus in front of all those religious people that were there on the day of Pentecost. And many would get saved through the message. What changed in Peter? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the difference. It wasn't all of a sudden Peter got brave. It wasn't all of a sudden he got his doctrine in theology. It wasn't all of a sudden everything was going right. It was simply the Holy Spirit. See, I can do that. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. I want you to add the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, being continuously filled with the Holy Spirit to your vocabulary. There was something different that happened, and the church multiplied. It just didn't add, it multiplied. Thousands and thousands of people were coming to know the Lord. They fellowshiped. Nightly, they hung out at the temple daily. They were creating miracles, signs, and wonders. They would even get transported. The Philip went from one place to another. But it's the Holy Spirit. And so I beg you, I beg you to reconsider your life with, in reference to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the missing component in most believers' lives. But without being filled with the Holy Spirit, and look, it's more than just speaking in tongues. Get that. We got to understand it's more than speaking in tongues. If, if the Holy Spirit isn't making you a powerful witness for him on a regular basis, wherever you go, something's missing. Would you agree with me? I heard that. So today, today on this memorial Eve. And by the way, everybody's invited to our house. Okay, I would love to say we're going to have water baptisms there, but we can't get that pool working. Too many holes in it. I beg with you, I plead with you, let become 
totally committed to letting the Holy Spirit just to take control of your life. Not Brett. Not somebody else. Just the Holy Spirit. Don't say, hey, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need doubt. I, I'm good. Cry out that the Lord will fill you with his presence. Cry out. If there's something, if there was something more that they were talking about the book, about in the book of Acts about the, the Holy Spirit, cry out for it. Don't stay where you are. Don't say, hey, I'm good. You ain't good. I'm not good without the Holy Spirit. You know, we need everything. I will, tell, I will say this. While the early church was in difficult circumstances, we will probably be in worse circumstances. Because the trickery, the deception will be even greater than ever before. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit every single day. We need to die daily and let the Holy Spirit rise up into us. And then we're going to become what? Galatians 2.20 people. It's no longer Brett who lives, but it's Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, who lives through me. That's what we're looking for. That's what God's looking for. So let's all stand.